The term hand trap in Yu-Gi-Oh! refers to the unofficial way that players have come to define monster cards that have effects that can be used from your hand, usually during the opponent's turn. There aren't actually specific defined criteria for this, which is why sometimes cards like Trigodia and Gores make it into this category, where a lot of times people are only thinking of modern cards like Ash Blossom or Max C. Because of this, it's a little bit hard to narrow down what cards exactly are hand traps, but we have a pretty good general idea. Today, I wanted to discuss the origins of hand traps, how they were originally designed versus how they are now, and also, more importantly, how I feel hand traps break Yu-Gi-Oh fundamentally. Uh, starting off with, I think we need to talk about why they're called hand traps. If you look at the original couple set, first couple sets of Yu-Gi-Oh, you'll notice that the best way and the most efficient way to interact with your opponent on their turn is through the use of trap cards. Not only were there not a ton of effect monsters when the game came out, but a lot of the spells just didn't have worthwhile effects on the opponent's turn, and if they did, they were so specific that they just weren't played. Obviously, I'm not talking about cards like Mystical Space Typhoon, but just the general spell cards that were in the game. Trap cards, however, came with very powerful effects. If you look at the 2005 Goat Control variants, a lot of them are playing Torrential Tribute or Mirror Force or Sakuratsu Armor, all these really good cards to deal with your opponent's cards on their turn, and they're things that you constantly have to worry about when you're going through a field. If you're going second and you see your opponent has two back row, you have to think about what those two back row are so you can play around them. Uh, hand traps, on the other hand, don't have the weakness that trap cards do, conventional trap cards that is, because trap cards and the biggest problem with them and why they've almost been completely phased out of the game outside of Floodgates and Solemn Strike, trap cards have to be set before you can activate them. This is their main flaw. Trap cards come with very powerful effects. However, they are the slowest form of Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and that made them get power crept out of the game almost entirely over the past five years. Yes, there are still decks that play trap cards, but almost every single quote-unquote best deck of the format for the past two years hasn't played a ton of trap cards outside of very specific ones like Solemn Strike or the Floodgates that I mentioned, which are exclusively played to stop your opponent from playing Yu-Gi-Oh in the first place. Hand traps don't have this weakness. Hand traps have all the benefits of regular trap cards, which is disrupting the opponent on their turn, but without the weakness that you have to set them first. They also break the game, and this will be my first point, by you don't know which ones are in your opponent's hand. Um, when you're going second against a field of two back row, you can maybe analyze which back row they are. Was it a Fiendish Chain or a Torrential Tribute, possibly Bottomless Trap Pull? However, when you're going second and your opponent ends with one monster and five or and four cards in their hand, you have literally no idea which hand traps they could be holding. Now, there can be some ways that you can figure this out. Maybe they think when you activate an effect that special summons that might telegraph like a max C, but generally speaking, it's just a crapshoot what they have in their hand because there's no way to tell which ones are hand traps. Um, from a skill perspective, this can be really frustrating because trap cards and the playing around trap cards always rewarded skilled players for knowing which trap cards were popular and which decks, but hand traps, for the most part, you can't avoid. They're right there, and outside of very fringe applications of cards like Psy Frame Gear Gamma, um, you really can't play around them outside of having more effects then your opponent has hand traps. And that is sort of a worthwhile endeavor. It definitely hurts rogue strategies. But in general, you can kind of look at it and say, hey, I'll activate my least important effects first and then try to work through my opponent's hand traps. But not every deck can do that, which brings me to my second reason that I feel hand traps break Yu-Gi-Oh!, and that is, I feel like a lot of times when we're in a format, like the last one we were in, where the best deck, which was Spirals, loses to hand traps like Droll and Lockbird or Ash Blossom, uh, I feel like rogue players tend to say, well, this is perfect. Now I can play 15 hand traps and I'll win every uh, meta matchup. But I don't think they realize that if they go first, not only does the opponent have the opportunity to also draw hand traps, but the opponent will win almost every single game that you don't draw the right hand traps at the right time. Um, that is not smart 
design. To have cards in your deck that will auto win matchups sometimes and auto lose matchups if you don't draw them is just not good because Yu-Gi-Oh! is designed to be as consistent as possible. If you compare it to other card games, and I've talked about this many times, I feel Yu-Gi-Oh! is purposely made to be faster and more consistent and to give you more access to the cards in your deck compared to any other card game out there, at least any of the major ones. We don't have to worry about drawing lands or mana. Pretty much every card you draw can be played immediately or in the case of trap card set and then played. And I think that really separates it from the pack. This brings me to my third point. Why do I feel hand traps break Yu-Gi-Oh? Well, I feel hand traps really ruin deck building. What do I mean by this? Well, when you're going second, boy, do you want some hand traps. You want one, two, sometimes even three hand traps if you're going second, depending on the deck that you're playing against. Against Spirals, often you would want to open not only Droll and Lockbird, but also Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. The Droll and Lockbird would take care of all the searches your opponent was doing, and the Ash Blossom would take care of the machine duplication. But it's not bad to have uh, Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries or Maxi or any number of hand traps to really counter your opponent's plays. So when you go second, you want to open a ton of hand traps, and then when you stop all your opponent's plays, they've run out of cards you go second draw your like to your three cards in hand because you've used all your hand traps and then you're able to combo off and kill your opponent however when you go first you don't want to draw any of those hand traps maybe you want to draw like one ash blossom to stop your opponent's max c but a lot of times and if you look at the feature matches from ycs dallas uh, you'll see people open hands with like Going first, Droll, Ash Blossom, Maxi, and Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries, and then like Spiral Quick Fix. And it's like, well, what the heck do they do with that hand? They summon Quick Fix and add something and pass? That's not that's not good. Um, generally speaking, you should reward players for playing better cards and for making good deck building choices. But when you throw in a paradox with hand traps where you simultaneously want to open and not open them, depending on if you go first or second, it just creates this really complicated situation. I also feel that this problem uh, doesn't lend Konami to making better card design. Uh, what I mean by that, and this is sort of my fourth point, I think we're on number four, uh, is that I feel like Konami isn't holding back on their card design as because they're using hand traps as an excuse. Uh, what I mean by this is by saying that, well, Droll and Lockbird exists in the game, well, then they can make a deck like Necroz or like uh, Spirals where they search 100 times in one turn because, oh, if you draw the Droll and Lockbird, your opponent can't do that. But I feel like that's not good. I feel like it's my same issue with Kaijus, and I made that Kaiju video where I talked about I felt that Kaijus meant that Konami didn't have to worry about making overpowered boss monsters, and in that same vein, I think that Konami is not worried about giving cards two overpowered effects because you just have hand traps. Well, theoretically, you have the option to play hand traps to stop them. That's that's just not good design. Konami should be trying to design decks that are worthwhile without drawing 15 hand traps. And that brings me to another point. This past format that we only had for two weeks was kind of annoying for rogue decks. If you want to succeed as a rogue deck, you basically were forced to play 15 hand traps in the main deck in the hopes that you would face Spiral and just counter all their plays, and then you would just summon Alistair the Invoker and then win from there. Um, I don't like formats like that. That seems really unbalanced. You shouldn't have to play 15 hand traps just to compete with the best deck. And that's not to say that every single time there's been a quote-unquote uh, best deck that can summon a whole bunch of things that you've had to play all those hand traps. And I think that's the key thing here. If we go back to the 2014 WCQ, which I think will... Well, and a lot of people, they, they really believe that this is like one of the best formats in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I personally have to agree with that in a lot of ways because you could play almost any deck and get away with it. On one hand, you had decks like Girgia and Hat that were very slow, control-oriented decks, but they didn't just lose going second, and there were very fast decks. Sylvans was probably the best contender, and a lot of, of the better players actually played that deck at that event and did quite well. And then Lightsworns were also another contender. Um, two decks that could make giant gigantic boards going first 
and breakboards going second. However, you didn't have to play 100 hand traps in the main deck just to counter Sylvans and Light Sworns. And I think that's the big difference between the last couple of formats that we've had and the old version of Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, or sort of the middle version of Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, speaking of like 2014, 2015, is that in the new version, it seems like every time we have a best deck, you're forced to play 100 hand traps to deal with it. And that's just not fun at all um you want to konami wrote that article that i talked about a couple weeks ago when i was at ycs dallas where they talked about how they didn't like um one of the reasons that they, they made the first like really hard ban list which got rid of a whole bunch of stuff was because every time you wanted to build a deck you had to put the same 23 cards in your deck that most of them are like really powerful spell cards really powerful monsters and then they said you know what we don't want people to have to feel forced to play the same 23 cards every time you enter a tournament. And I think the same thing is happening with hand traps. I don't think you can play this last format without instantly starting your deck list with three Droll and Lockbird, three Ash Blossom, one Maxi, and a couple of Ghost Luggers. I think it was virtually impossible to play any deck, even Spirals, even Rogue, unless you started out your deck with that. And that's just not good. That's not That doesn't reward good deck building when almost half your deck is already taken up the second you start it. Uh, but that's probably it for my hand trap rant. I kind of just want to talk about a lot of different ways that I feel hand traps are bad for the game. I don't think they're going to go out of the game anytime soon. It looks like Konami is really headed in the direction. I'm sure this this coming year we'll have another um, addition to the sort of level 3 uh, 1800 defense zero attack uh, hand traps like we've gotten one every year. We got Ghost Ogre and then we got... Uh, Reaper, and now we have Ash Blossom. So I'm sure this year we'll have another one that does even more ridiculous things. We'll have to see. Um, I don't necessarily hate hand traps. I do feel that they've gotten away from what they were cr first created as, though. If you look at cards like DD Crow and Gemini Imps, cards that were meant for specific matchups but weren't just all inclusive, like Ash Blossom, those cards I felt were. Uh, well designed because they only worked against certain decks so you wouldn't want to main deck 10 of them uh, but now i feel like the hand traps have gotten way too generic and we might need to scale back a bit before thinking about what konami can do to fix hand traps um, which i think is the next step for making this game not just totally terrible uh, anyway though i will see you guys later let me know what you think in the comments below bye